about family justice. What you need to know about the Mental Capacity Act in Singapore. About the Mental Capacity Act. The Mental Capacity Act, or MCA, allows people who have lost mental capacity, known as the patient, to have deputies appointed to make decisions on his or her behalf. Who is a patient in the context of the MCA? The patient is an adult individual who lacks the mental capacity to make decisions due to an impairment of or disturbance in the functioning of the mind or brain. A patient can be any adult with an intellectual disability. In this video, we will use the elderly man as an example of a patient. The lack of mental capacity should be substantiated through a medical report by a registered medical practitioner. Is it necessary to apply to be appointed as a deputy under the MCA? Discuss with family members on whether it is necessary to apply to be appointed as a deputy under the MCA to act on behalf of the patient. Who is a deputy? A deputy is a court-appointed individual who is granted specific powers by the court to make decisions for the benefit and welfare of the patient as if the patient still has mental capacity. Family members should decide who is best suited to be appointed as the deputy for the patient and if more than one deputy is required. Apart from taking care of the patient's personal needs and financial affairs, the deputy may also be required to submit an annual report to the Office of Public Guardian to explain what decisions he or she had made for the patient and how he or she had used the patient's funds for the benefit of the patient. Questions to consider for the patient here are some questions to consider for the patient. 1. Where is the patient going to stay? 2. Who will be taking care of the patient? 3. What are the arrangements for paying the expenses incurred for the patient? 4. How long can the patient's funds last? 5. Is there a need to apply for other relevant powers for the patient based on his or her current circumstances? For example, Powers relating to using funds from the patient's bank account for the patient's expenses, making insurance claims for the patient, managing matters related to the patient's house, giving consent to medical treatment for the patient, etc. How to file an application to be appointed as a deputy under the MCA. If you choose to engage a lawyer to represent you, you should do so as soon as possible. You can also seek free legal advice with the Community Justice Centre or CJC. Six Steps to Commence a Mental Capacity Act Application Step 1. Obtain the consent of relevant persons before applying. Relevant persons are, for example, the patient's immediate family members or persons who are very involved in the patient's life. Step 2. Obtain a medical report. Obtain a medical report from a doctor to certify the patient's loss of mental capacity. The MCA application may be filed via IFAMS or e-litigation at the Crimson Logic Service Bureau. If the application is filed via IFAMS, the doctor can submit the report via IFAMS or provide a signed hard copy affidavit containing the report to the applicant for filing. If the application is filed via e-litigation, the applicant must file the doctor's affidavit containing the report via e-litigation. Step 3. File the application and supporting documents. File your application and submit necessary documents to Family Justice Courts or FJC via 1. IFAMS for the simplified track if certain conditions are met or 2 e-litigation at the Crimson Logic Service Bureau for the normal track. For more information on the simplified track, please scan the QR code to access the applicant's guide. The application must be filed within six months from the date of the medical report. Step 4. Consent. If the application was filed via IFAMS, relevant persons can log into the IFAMS system via SingPass to indicate that they agree to the application. Alternatively, the applicant can serve the application form and related documents to the relevant persons and file a declaration of service via IFAMS. 
Once this step is complete, the applicant will need to pay the application fee of $40. If the application was filed via e-litigation, the applicant must file the signed consent via e-litigation. Separate fees apply for e-litigation cases. Step 5. Court Proceedings if the court needs clarification, the applicant may be asked to submit further documents or attend court. If no further clarification is required and the court agrees that the order sought by the applicant should be granted, the court will grant the order of court. If the application was filed via IFAMS, the order may be sent to the applicant through email. This is why applicants need to provide a valid email address in their application form. If the application was filed via e-litigation, the order must be extracted via e-litigation through the Crimson Logic Service Bureau. Step 6. Keeping Good Records The Office of the Public Guardian, or OPG, may request for records of decisions made on the patient's behalf from time to time. As the applicant deputy, you should start keeping a record of decisions made on the patient's behalf and how the patient's funds are utilized for his or her benefit. The OPG website provides a deputy report form for use in keeping a record. For more information, please visit the FJC website. You may also find the information on the following websites to be useful. Mental Capacity Act Community Justice Centre Office of the Public Guardian